Jones. Good morning. I'm Anya. Over there is my harp, Sean the harp. Can you see? He's hiding behind the chair there in blue. And together we are the Flatting Harper. And today is day 113 of From Here to Jerusalem. Let me plug in a little bit because I heard that yesterday the stream wasn't the best, the best, the best. Uh, so, we were in noise yesterday and we had to go and pick up. Two, two, two. Here we go. And we had to go pick up new shoes. We had to pick up new shoes. Um, my shoes had broken and here we are. I have new shoes. They are Merrill's. So Merrill's it is. Uh, so yesterday after, uh, after the update, uh, we packed up ready to go um, and uh, I went out walked into noise center had a cup of coffee and then headed out to the outskirts of uh, of noise to the oh what is it called they had a oh, one of those anyway let me put it this way you have an outdoor store for outdoor campaign stuff, this and that and the other, and you want, uh, you're into like um, outdoor sports, outdoor everything, and then you put it somewhere in a big, 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 big shopping center on the outskirts of the city. I don't know, I thought it was a bit weird. It took me about three quarters of an hour to get there um, on foot. Uh, on the way back, I took a tramway back into Noyce. Um, what, what is it? What kind of shop was it again? It's one of those, uh, Decathlon. So they had a Decathlon, and I thought, okay, I'll go out there. So I did. I headed out there, and uh, yeah, it was ugly. It was ugly walk, like ugly. There was nothing nice about it, and it is part of the, the Liege walk. It's also part of the Jakobsweg. It was pretty dire. I was not a happy bunny at all. That's okay. That's okay. I got there. I got to the Cathlon. I walked in there. Not a person could help me. Come to the shoes. Loads of loads of shoes. Most of them Decathlon uh, type shoes. And then I found the mirrors. Like I had a really big blister underneath my right foot. Yeah. I tried on two or three of the other shoes, all of them, the insides were too flat, uh, there was not enough support for my high instep. Um, the Merrells, oh, they were like gloves, they're very low though, so they're quite loose at, uh, at the back, which is actually surprisingly nice, and they roll really well. Uh, now, I looked up again, you know, how long are, are your shoes supposed to hold, and uh, I'd have to say, the old pair not bad at all uh, they did last their thousand kilometers but just about uh, now the issue of course is, is that I'm not necessarily in the mountains I'm walking different surfaces so from tarmac to stones to pebbles to sand to whatever and so at some stage like when the profile wears down they just crack and that's what happened now hoping the merrills will hold a little bit longer I like them. I really thought I might be able to keep the shoes that I had until Vienna. Not a hope in hell. I have another thousand kilometers to go until Vienna, so hopefully they'll hold until the Merrells will hold until Vienna. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, yeah, so I was I was pretty annoyed by the time I came away from there. I gave them my old shoes. Uh, I nearly walked out without paying for them because there was nobody there, like nobody. Nobody was helping me. Nobody came to say, see, was I okay? There was no personnel there. 
And then I thought, nah, I'm a pilgrim, I can't be doing that. But I was very, very tempted to just walk out. Okay, contemporary selling techniques, not great. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the self-checkout. Like, they want to employ people. Like, if you really want to do your economic system and you want to employ people, you want everybody in work, then give them, give people something to do. Don't have a place like Decathlon and have like a self-checkout. Most people have no idea what they're looking for. Like, and how are you, it's just wrong. Like, sorry, bit of service, always nice. So I set off uh, walking. That was better. Like, once I was outside of noise, like you come to, uh, you, you come to the mill and you have like the old uh, city, uh, city gate that was all lovely and then once you go through the forest uh, you end up back at the Rhine and it is really nice and I read, uh, I'd found this place where I thought yeah I'll go for lunch there uh, on the Rhine and lots of good reviews like a uh, really German kitchen uh, so again you know there were schnitzels on there but there were also spetzel and salads on the menu and I thought that's something I would fancy. <coughs> but one of the reviews was saying like, oh, uh, the menu was boring because there were schnitzels on there. <laughs> and what was it with German people saying that the Rhine is a beautiful place to have lunch at? Okay, I've got a theory, yeah? This is it. It is, this part of the Rhine is the most industrial part of the Rhine. When you're walking around here, there is nothing else but industry. There is railway lines, there is boats on the Rhine, and there is heavy traffic. So if you can get a place where you have a view over a few trees and some fishermen, then that is a really good thing, because there isn't much else. Like, there is no forestry, there is no beautiful stuff. It just isn't there. So, you know, when you give out about this, then you need to get your context right. You need to get your context right. And I felt that this person, you know, expanding the repertoire about uh, what is possible within the Ruhr, it's limited. Uh, so now, in order to get to that place, you had to um, go through this, like, forestry. You come by... Um, uh, you can buy a hospital which is run by Augustinian sisters and then you have a big stretch of a uh, type of forestry park thing and you can buy what they would call a zee here which of course is lake and I, had to, I, I, I hadn't tweaked this yet but mir, mir means sea and zee means lake so it's the wrong way around so every time I see zee I have to kind of laugh because I'm looking at lake and then when they're talking about Mir, that's when we're talking about the actual sea. So I'm walking by there, this is Russian ship in this little lake, uh, which has an entry onto the Rhine. Uh, and then when you, when you head out to the headland, there used to be a Roman bridge there because there is a little river that streams into the Rhine there. So I read the little plate, walked on, went to the restaurant, ordered Spetsen. They weren't handmade spetzel, which made me kind of sad because I've had handmade spetzel and they're really nice. I believe the girl was from Bayern or something. Uh, she was a work away at a, at a friend of mine's. So but these were like, it's basically pasta. You have cheese, you have like cream, you put vegetables over it and you eat it. So it was great walking food. And then uh, the, the woman I had met the day before, um, Rosie, she was saying that uh, uh, she would like to come and meet me and she was two villages down. So she did come and meet with me. Uh, we, we, she had a coffee with me and then we walked along the Rhine and there was a really good ice cream shop. We had an ice cream there and then I walked on alone. She went back and she said maybe we'll meet up again in Köln. And she sent me an address in Köln where I could play and really lovely. So she sent me a message again this morning uh, saying that um, she would, she would meet me. Now, the thing with the shoes was that I'd lost so much time. I'd lost so much time walking out there, and then I took the tramway back, and like, noise was actually nicer than I thought it would be. Um, I'm glad I didn't go in, into Dusseldorf, and I'm really looking forward to Cologne, to be honest. 
Um, after she left, I thought, Willa, there is a, 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 Jugend, um, a Jugend Herberge. And I realized that, no, I'm still not. I wasn't feeling 100%. Uh, after the heat, I've had a bit of a gut thing. Like, it's, uh, my, my guts are a little bit upside down. And I think it has to do with drinking lukewarm water and just the heat and that I, I was trying to drink enough and I did and I didn't and et cetera, et cetera. So I'm just going to keep myself safe. This is still the rule. I'm, I'm not comfortable in, uh, I'm not brave enough really to sleep out in this area. And I'm just waiting until I leave Cologne. Uh, now I've been doing a little bit of reading up on what I'm going to do next and I have kind of been thinking that after after a Cologne, I'd like to walk uh, along the Limes. So the Roman uh, yesterday as well, we walked by one of those Roman towers uh, on the Rhine. I'd like to see more of the Limes. There is quite a bit uh, of leftovers, so I'd like to do that. Uh, so I was reading up on that as I was going along. And then I thought I was going to stay at the youth hostel, but I wasn't. I was thinking, I'm not so sure I can do this with a whole lot of youngsters. Let me get to Cologne, and then once I'm there, I will, I will draw a new plan, and I will be braver again afterwards. So, yeah, I'm not always brave. <laughs> then, um, unfortunately, I got double charged as well there two days ago. So lucky for me, I normally never check anything, but I thought I'd check the numbers against each other and it turned out I had double paid for uh, a room so I need to keep an eye on the thing because it is like I'm hemorrhaging money in this area because beds are never cheap and of course you know it is what it is that I walked on a little bit further and ended up on um, ended up in a small hotel contactless thing little room nothing fancy but uh, next door there was a barbecue restaurant, Big Hog, called Big Hog. Oh my God, it was amazing. I had pulled pork, um, and, uh, kartoffeln pulled pork, so big potato with creamed, uh, creamed corn and pulled pork, which they, they do the barbecues in like these big American barbecue things. And it was really, really good. Not to mention, they had like this lemonade that was divine, and then I had a, 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 a local beer to go with my pulled pork, and then I had a dessert beer which was like a lime, a, a lemon beer, and it was great. It was really, really, really nice. So if you're ever in this part of the world, I would highly recommend you go there. It's called Big Hog Barbecue. Um, and the guy, when I told the guy what I was doing, he was going like, oh, wow, that's amazing. So yeah, there wasn't much that happened yesterday. It was nice seeing Rosie again. Um, do you know, walking with people who don't walk, like, and she was very clear about that. She doesn't walk very often. Uh, do you know, she's chatting away and chatting away and talking about her husband and the walking and she normally drives and the most interesting thing that was happening basically was meeting me and I'm thinking, oh, I just, I just have to carry all of this and I just, it's warm, like, but it was nice, it was nice, the chattering next to me was, was nice, um, but I didn't get as far as I wanted to just, just because of the way things were and I didn't make it to the outskirts, I didn't make it to Dormagen. Uh, which I will do now next. So this morning I woke up, um, turned out my phone wasn't charged fully because whatever, the, the contact wasn't great. So I walked out nah, and 15 minutes down the road, there's an Edeka and Edekas always have really good bakeries. So nice coffee, bit of bit of pie to start the day, you know, bit of lamb pie, there's, there's loads of sunshine. There was a bit of rain again last night the road was really busy. Oh my God, those mosquitoes are just coming for me. I need to go find something to actually put on me that is, that is, because I, half the night I was up listening to them going, and then by accident I smashed one on my pillow and it was blood everywhere. <laughs> it was not great. 
Uh, I do feel refreshed. I feel good. It's um, it's about 30 kilometers, uh, 34 kilometers to get to the dome of uh, Cologne from where I am. So I don't think I'll make it today, but I'm kind of thinking that I might go to the outskirts, get as far in as I can, take take uh, a public transport, go to the apartment of Jenny, Jenny and Søren's apartment, and just finish up tomorrow with half of my pack, just the harp. Uh, yeah. Is there anything that I need to say about food around here? Yeah, I've, I was reading up again on uh, on Xanten and the, the the panels and stuff, the altar panels. Um, there is, there isn't. What's really interesting, like there was Xanten Dome, was restored. There was work done there in the 1980s, and there's a new organ, new windows. Uh, there is no information about it whatsoever. I think that what happens here, uh, also on Wikipedia, is that this entire war history thing here is not mentioned. Like, we don't do it. In the crypt, there is a, um, there is a martyr from the Second World War is buried there. Um, and uh, as they were ex excavating the, the uh, what is it? Under underneath the church, they found two graves, which they attribute to Victor, Saint Victor, who who the dome is named after, who was, um, uh, as far as I understand, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that he was martyred uh, as a Roman soldier, saying 300 something, 400 something. Uh, they've got these. Uh, they're being asked to worship. Uh, to bring offers to the Roman gods, and they ref he refuses to do it. Him and his legionnaires, they're Christians, and so they killed him. And they did find two graves as they excavated the crypt, and there is now the grave of uh, of this modern martyr, who spent his time from 30, 39 to forty five in Dachau, where he uh, where he uh, he only said one mass there at the end of the war, and. Once they get out of Dachau, he is brought to a hospital uh, for um, uh, because he's got TB. He was in really bad form, and it is then by the end of the summer that he dies. And it he is uh, he becomes he becomes martyred officially in 1996. So uh, at the year that Sarah is born. What was interesting is I'm in the crypt, yeah, I'm looking there and you see the name uh, Rosic, which is which was his name, and he is he is there. And there's three other guys there which were also in um, Dachau Treblinka and, and Auschwitz. So I'm there, there's a, a Spanish family comes down, they look around, they go ho ho, they make a thing, they look at the grave, the, the you know, the, the grave that you can see that they that they found uh, when they uh, when they uh, uncovered the crypt and they're going yeah oh, there must be somebody in there and there isn't much information and what happened was that as I walked out they had these little leaflets about this about this saint and I pick up the one from a Polish and Dutch section and what do I take is the Polish one so I still had no information then uh, a Dutch family comes down they kind of look around they go away again and then a German family comes down and they look at the names and they see Dachau Treblinka uh, uh, and uh, Auschwitz they look up they look down they walk out so this whole thing about martyrs of the Second World War it's just this whole Second World War thing is a thing we still do not speak about here so it's also not part of the way history is told so the the renewal parts of the of the dome ink something there's very little information about it because we don't talk about it yet uh, hopefully this will change I think that's one of the things I think would be really really good it's okay it made me very emotional even talking about it now I'm kind of thinking will I cry won't I cry um, but it's important like it's it's important uh, especially now in in this day and age where we're looking at war again it's important to remind people how terrible all of this is like. 
uh, and how hard it was on all these people. So, yeah, that's really it. I'm going to sit with this now a little bit. I watched, uh, I watched a lot of train transports yesterday as I was walking about. There is, um, so you've got like a, a harbor section that came from noise and then you've got uh, Dusseldorf and stuff. All these big boats, like I saw big, big boats. There's not much water in the Rhine. The Rhine is very, very low. And even the, uh, some of the streams that go in to the Rhine, they, there's barely any water going in there at the moment. Uh, so it was good that there was a bit more, uh, bit more water coming down, but by far it isn't enough. And it also tells us that further up Rhine, there's also not enough water coming down. Uh, I'm starting to realize I am in Germany, and I'm starting to realize how big my prejudice actually is. Um, I'm not proud of it. I'm working very hard at it. When I get nervous, I speak English <laughs> all the time. Um, and then when, I'm, when I feel okay, I can speak German, and I do quite a good job at it. Um, it's really weird because I seem to be judging people all the time by uh, their age. So if they're my mother's age, I'm thinking they were the kids of, and when they're my age, then they are the kids of those kids. And so uh, the relationship changes all the time. It's strange, it's strange. And I, I'm working on it because I know that we're all just people. And, uh, you know, history is not made as we are, as I'm experiencing today. It's not made by people like me. We're just, you know, being, being herded in a certain direction. And, uh, you know, it's better if we talk about it. When evil comes to us, we should put it out into the light. That was the lesson I learned in my first journey. and. I, that's the thing I'm trying uh, to do for myself as much as I would like other people to see doing this. Now, um, today the walk will bring me along the Rhine, most part. I'm not going to cut off anything because I'm going to enjoy it. I'm going to try and sit a little bit with this idea of watching the Rhine as a beautiful place here. Because I've really, you know, my, normally my uh, relationship with nature is pretty good. I remember standing in a field in France sometimes and thinking, I don't know if it's safe to sleep here because there might be, like remember with the hedgehog there the other night, uh, you know, I, you know, normally I would ask the land, is it okay for me to sleep there to point me to the right direction? I know it sounds really airy fairy, but it does work, like it has always worked for me. And every time I'm standing here around fields and stuff, I'm just not comfortable. So. Not comfortable is not comfortable. I, I'm working on it. Once I leave Cologne, I have to stop um, spending money on beds the way I am doing right now because it's not going to work. I won't make it to the end uh, in that manner. Germany is Western European country. It's very habit inhabited, especially this part of the world. So I'll sit with it. Um, but I need to work a little bit more on my humility. That was something that came on yesterday for sure as I was walking with this lady and I was listening to her and I was turning into myself and I'm thinking, humility, Anya, humility. You are not alone in this world. There is many people that need many things. I'm just one of many. Um, can I do this? Um, I, f I feel that uh, sometimes I'm being lauded for things that I'm actually not capable of doing at all. I'm not that great. Like, I'm just a human, and obviously, like, here I'm running into a lot of my fears. Um, industrialization doesn't suit me. It makes me uncomfortable. Uh, loads of people together. Uh, you know, like, here is what, like I said about the architecture before, uh, the architecture is really boring because there isn't that much from before 1940, you know, there's the odd uh, 1901, 1880, 89, uh, the churches, they have older parts in it. Um, but really, you know, there isn't a, uh, it's not that interesting. And then you look at the cars that are being driven. What is wrong with people? And then that example of, you know, having, having your outdoor gear somewhere in the outskirts of a city where you can't get there. Like, if you're going to be promoting doing things on foot, then make it, make it a pleasurable experience at all times so that people can feel better about the, the way they do things.
I'm not seeing it yet. Maybe it will come. So now also, Ger Germany has, uh, you know, is very high, is a high achiever. Has been, uh, has had like high goals for their uh, emission emission reductions and stuff. Here in the Ruhr, forget about it. Like, it's uh, it's not. If if there's any rules being broken, uh, they're going to be broken here. Like, there is an enormous amount of traffic. Although we have the nine euro ticket now for July, and it's going to be extended until August. People are in their cars all day, every day, and there's traffic everywhere. There's heavy traffic, big trucks everywhere, big boats everywhere, trains everywhere, diesel trains going through here. I mean, and not to mention the chemical plants and stuff. So there is still a lot of work to be done. And also, if we want more people to walk and on bicycles, you have to make it attractive. The cycle lanes are very good. Uh, Hey, you're doing hard work in your brain and being aware of this stuff. Uh, thank you very much, Vicky. Thank you. It's really good to see you. Um, give my love to Clonic Hilti. I miss Clon at the moment. It feels like a little, little, little island of, of beauty and wonderful stuff, really. And I feel very, very far away from home. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the brain, you're right. My brain is doing overtime. It is uh, all a little bit too much. I'm gonna go start walking. I think I've babbled enough for one day. I'm gonna go see, can I get to Cologne and can I get back that feeling of that I'm walking through history. Uh, this is not the type of history that I was looking for. I find it very confrontational, but you know what? That's how we learn. Uh, the Ruhr is, for me, is for once. Uh, I may never have to come back here and every time when people say to me oh isn't that beautiful and I was sitting there yesterday myself looking out over the Rhine watching those big ships saying like what a beautiful spot and it's right compared to the spots that I was sitting in before that was a beautiful spot eating spätzle okay there we go thank you very much I might speak to you later I don't know where I'm going to be sleeping yet uh, tonight I'm going to figure that out later on, uh, like I've done every day so far. I'm still on the north side, uh, on the south side of the Rhine, so I'm still on the, the underneath the Rhine, or western side, southwestern side of the Rhine, and um, I won't be crossing it until I start walking on the Limes. That's my plan. Cologne, here I come. Thank you for being here with me, and uh, I will. Thank you. I will, of course I will. Of course I will. I just I feel a little bit weak at the moment. Uh, I will, of course, of course I'm strong. Of course I'm strong. But I'm, I'm uh, a little bit weak in the sense that uh, uh, I'm, I'm just not sure. Everything feels really strange and I am the only pilgrim. I haven't met any pilgrims. Like I've met people who have done pilgrimages. There's no pilgrims yet. Day 113. 313. Nothing. Nothing. No pilgrims. One. My Austrian, uh, my Austrian uh, priest there back in uh, between uh, between uh, Carlo and Athai. Anyway, there we go. This is it for me for today. Sean the Harp is over there. Da, da, da. Let me see. We're in the Edeka Bakery. There he is. And Sean the Harp says goodbye. I say goodbye for now, and uh, we'll be here again pretty soon. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me. You can follow me, of course. There is uh, Instagram, there's TikTok, there's Twitter, there's all kinds of stuff. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again here soon. Bye-bye. Oh, and a hug, a big hug, the barbecue place. Mm, really, really good. Uh, what can I say? See you soon.